Hi, and welcome to Mountain Chef, and we're going to teach you today how to make an artisan bread. Now, there's a lot of speculation as to what an actual artisan bread is. A lot of people think anything homemade is now artisan, but the definition of an artisan bread is a sourdough bread, one that uses a starter. And there's two different kinds of starters that you can use. This one that I'm using today is what's called a poolish. It's a very, very liquidy, uh, almost a jello-like consistency of a starter. And then a biga starter is just simply leftover bread that's already been kneaded, ready to go. And that you just take a chunk of that bread dough and set it aside overnight. And uh, you use it as your starter the next day. So today we're going to use a foolish starter, which, like I said, this is a... You can use a wild sourdough or you can make your own sourdough. Um, to make this poolish, all I did was mix in one cup of water, one cup of flour, and one teaspoon of yeast, mixed up and let it sit overnight. And that'll give you, a, it's a domesticated sourdough, but it still is a sourdough. If you want to do a natural sourdough, you mix in the one cup of flour and the one cup of water and let it sit until bubbles start to appear and you scrape off the crust and you can use it. It usually will take two or three times to domesticate the yeast and once you have it domesticated then you can start using it and it'll taste great in your breads. So this is really simple what we're going to do. I'm going to start with this Poolish starter which should be almost two cups of a starter. And I'm just going to pour it into my bowl. And then I have one half a cup of warm water uh, it just has to be room temperature. Okay, and I'm going to use one third of a cup of sugar. It's just plain white sugar. You can use honey if you want a different alternative. And then this is the kind of yeast I prefer to use. It's called a sack yeast. And I'm going to use uh, two tablespoons of sack yeast. And that may seem like a lot of yeast to some of you. And it is, but it also will give us a nice airy texture to the bread in a lot quicker manner than letting it sit overnight, say. So now once I have this, I'm just going to start mixing this in until the water is really well incorporated. So you need to mix the poolish into the water really, really well and incorporate it. That way you get an even distribution of the starter into the dough that you're going to make. So I'm going to stir it until I don't see any more strands of the poolish left in the mix. Next, we're going to start adding white flour. Doesn't have to be anything special, just all-purpose flour. We're going to start adding it in increments, a few scoops at a time. You can always add more flour to dry out your dough, but it's really hard to add water if your dough is too stiff. So what I like to do is just mix it in a little bit at a time. And you're trying to get it mixed into the point where it's hard to stir. So we're going to keep adding flour and stirring until it gets hard for us to stir. And that's usually about right. That makes it about a 90% saturation. For most of your artisan breads, you want about an 80% saturation. So by the time it's too hard to mix, um, we'll keep adding some more flour in as we need it. And then we get a really nice, either an 80-20 or a 70-30 saturation on our dough. And this is just a really simple thing. You notice I have some sea salt here, but I haven't put it in yet. The reason I don't do that yet is because the salt has a tendency to stunt the yeast and make it so it doesn't work really well. So I'm going to wait until I get it stirred up pretty good before I add a couple of teaspoons of salt. Now, the nice thing about artisan bread is there's no precise measurements. You don't have to be exactly with everything. So what I like to do is just cut my hand Pour a little salt in there, that's about a teaspoon, add another teaspoon. Okay, you can see that it's really hard to stir now, and that it's a very, very sticky consistency, and that's about right, that's what we want. I just want to stir it around, make sure I get up all the little pieces off the bottom. And now, I'm going to start kneading the dough. So now we have this bread dough ready to go. It's very, very, very sticky. If you touch it with your fingers, um, it will stick all over your fingers. Um, you can use gloves, but I find it's very hard to use gloves and tell what your dough is doing. So what I do is I start with a little bit of flour on the outside, and then what we want to do with this dough is we want to stretch it, and we want to envelop air into the dough, and that develops the gluten strands. And I'm going to start by folding and pressing. 
and just coating it in flour every once in a while. If it gets a little sticky, just roll it. So I like to keep a little flour to the side and just roll it every once in a while just so it's not too sticky to work with. Now this actually takes a little time and practice to do, and the reason I'm rolling and then folding in a different direction is I'm trying to stretch the gluten strands in different ways. But once I get it to about this point where I can handle it but it's still pretty sticky, I'm going to do another kneading process. I think it's called a slap kneading. What I'll do is I'll throw it down and then fold it over. So as you can see, it's sticking to the board. I'm folding over an air pocket and pulling it. This will develop the glutens quicker than anything else that you can do and give you a very nice chewy texture and a nice crust. Now, this is a lot of work. It'll take you at least 15 minutes of doing this to get your bread dough to the right place. So here's the other method. You can gather it up, slap it, twirl it, and pick it up. It is doing a similar motion to what your KitchenAid mixer will do. Um, I enjoy doing it by hand. Okay, you can see the glassy smooth texture of the dough. They call it smooth as a baby's bum, is what you're looking for. But see, it's still very, very, very sticky. And that's fine. That's exactly what we want. If your bread gets too stiff, you won't get a proper rise. And it'll be a dense, mealy loaf of bread. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this ball, I'm going to throw a little flour on it, and leave this underside without. Then I'm going to start turning it in on itself. So I turn the bread in on itself, just like this. And what that does is create a parachute effect. So as the yeast rises, It'll parachute like a balloon and uh, fill it up with nice air. Now you see at the top, I'm just going to pinch that shut. This is to prevent any seams. And then I'm going to go right into the proofing basket. Now I'm going to go ahead and spread out quite a bit of flour on this. And this is so it does not stick to the edges of the proofing basket. Now we're just going to cover that and let it relax for an hour to two hours, depending on when it, how long it takes to rise. It should be almost to the top of that proofing basket when you're ready to cook. And you know you have enough dough when it fills up about half of the proofing basket. And that's just the perfect amount of dough for a nice loaf of artisan bread. So a lot of people have asked, well, if I don't have a proofing basket like the one we use, you know, how am I gonna do this? All it takes is any kind of a bowl that you, is about the right shape and size for a loaf of bread. So make sure it'll fit in your pan that you're gonna cook it in before you do this. And then all you gotta do is take a linen towel. It can't be a fuzzy towel or the bread dough will stick to it really good. You just lay it into your bowl, sift some flour on top of there, set your dough on top of the, on top of the linen rag, and you just fold it over the top and it'll proof just as well as if you had one of those proofing baskets. Okay, so when we left this, it was only about halfway up that proofing dish. Now you can see it's actually over the top of it. Uh, this is a preheated Dutch oven. This is about 425 degrees right now. I've had it in the oven. And I'm going to, if you're doing it outside, you could do the same thing with charcoal. Just get it nice and preheated. Now I'm going to use parchment paper for the bottom of this. This serves two purposes. Number one, this will allow us, it won't stick on the bottom of that Dutch oven. But number two, and most important, it's going to allow us to steam the bread. So we're going to go ahead and set that parchment paper there. And then we'll just turn this down. Just like that, and voila, the bread comes out. Blow some of the flour over the top. Now, if you just bake it like this, you'll get big uneven cracks through it. So what you're gonna do is cut some lines in there, and this will allow, while it expands, um, somewhere for it to expand to. You can do a cross, you can do three lines, 10 lines, a cob style, doesn't matter. So we're just going to do three lines like this. It's real simple, real easy. Then I'm just going to take this squirt bottle of water, squirt the bread down just on the outside. Then I'm going to pick up the parchment paper very carefully and set that in the hot Dutch oven. Then I'm going to pour this between the parchment paper and the Dutch oven. Okay, set the lid 
on the Dutch oven, and then this is going to go right into the oven. You notice I only put a half a, a half a cup of water in there. You don't need much. You only want that steam for the first two or three minutes of cooking. Okay, so this has been about 35 minutes at 425 degrees. I'm going to pull it out and take a look. Looks absolutely beautiful. So now what we're going to do with this bread is take it out of the Dutch oven. And we're gonna let it sit here and cool down for about 15 minutes. And then we're gonna return it back to the oven and that'll crisp up this crust. Right now it's gonna allow the steam to go through it, but the crust will soften up for a minute. So we're gonna let it relax for just a minute before putting it back in the oven once again. So we let the bread relax for about 15 minutes. We put it back into the oven. And the reason we do that is so we get that nice crispy exterior. Because if you just pull it out, the steam will make the crust a little bit soggy. But now you can see that's nice, crisp, chewy, exactly what you want on a nice bread. So we're ready to slice this up and eat it. This is my favorite part is when you get a nice hot loaf of the artisan bread. You hear that crunch on the outside. It's just perfect. So to come take a look at that crumb on the inside. It's just a really nice, good, chewy texture. 